Hello, I'm Jay. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you about legend list and optimizing performance. Uh, so raise your hand if you've ever had any problems with lists in React Native. <laughs> so everybody, OK. Uh, so first, a little intro to me and why I care about this. So I started my career as a game developer. I worked on, in C++ on a Nintendo Wii game. I learned a lot about performance, working with the constrained processing power of the Wii. And then I went to Microsoft, and I worked on Windows 7 and in a hardware research group. I worked on some computer vision and high-performance touch devices, like this one with one millisecond of latency, which was super cool. And so now I'm a performance-obsessed web and mobile developer. So at some conferences last year, I was chatting about the new architecture, as people do, and all the new things it could enable. And everyone I talked to complained about lists, about the bad performance and weird hacks. React Native can do really amazing things, but this seemingly simple thing, just having items in a list, was surprisingly slow. So I wondered if I could build a faster list and also solve all of the problems all at the same time. How hard could that be, right? Uh, so it turns out it was pretty hard. Uh, I almost gave up at least a dozen times. But after a lot of experimenting, I finally cracked it. So legend list is faster than flash list, and of course, a lot faster than flat list. Uh, it's 100% JavaScript, so it works on any platform. My original prototype used my other library, Legend State, but I made a tiny signaling system for it, so there's no dependencies at all. Uh, this is it powering a photo gallery app I'm making with React Native Mac OS. Uh, should work great on TVs and VR and any other platform as well. And it solves all the weird problems. So for example, recycling is a great optimization for lists. But it can also cause really weird behavior. It reuses item components, so managing internal state with recycling can be a real mess. So Legend List has uh, use recycling state and use recycling effect hooks to make that easy for you. Uh, or you can just disable recycling entirely if it causes too many problems. You miss out on some performance, but there's no weirdness. Uh, it also supports maintain visible content position thanks to contributions from Michael Bilenko, who's somewhere here. Uh, so that allows adding or resizing items above the screen without shifting the content you're looking at. And that enables bi-directional infinite lists and accurate scroll to index. So you can scroll infinitely up and down either way. Chat UIs are usually done by inverting the list, which kind of blew my mind when I found this out. But it means you render with a transform scale y of negative 1. So the top of your list is actually at the bottom of the screen. And that makes it hard to do animations and screen transition. And it does a lot of really weird stuff. Like when an item resizes, it goes up instead of down, which looks really silly. So Legend List does that without inverting. It just adjusts padding and uses maintain visible content position, which is always hard for me to say. Um, and it manages the scroll positions to kind of make it all work. It works on both old and new architecture, though it's faster and more accurate on new architecture, thanks to the new synchronous layout features, which I'll get into in a bit. But I don't have time to go into detail on all of this stuff, so I'm going to focus on how I approach the performance problems and how the main optimizations work. So when trying to make something fast, the first thing that I do is identify the bottlenecks. So I make sure I'm optimizing the things that actually impact the real performance. Uh, the reason I do this is I once fell into a trap when I was making an iPad game in Unity, and it was feeling slow. It was written in JavaScript, and everyone knows JavaScript is slow, and native apps are better. So obviously, that was the problem. So I learned Objective-C. I learned OpenGL. I rebuilt everything from scratch in a fully native Objective-C application with raw OpenGL. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh. It was not any faster at all. Uh, it was actually just a bug in a shader. It took me 10 minutes to fix it. Uh, so I wasted a month on that. I was so upset, I couldn't even bear to look at that code anymore. I gave up on the project completely. So this burned this lesson into me. Identify the bottlenecks first. You need to know what's actually slow, what's the real problem, before you can find the right solution. In React, the bottleneck is usually re-rendering, even more so in React Native, because it has to render all the native views as well. 
When you render, it runs your whole component function, it manages all the hooks, it renders a virtual DOM, it reconciles and diffs it with the previous frame, it commits the changes to native UI. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of stuff. If a component renders a few times, it's not a huge problem. But if it's a hot path, like a list, then uh, many components rendering a ton is gonna have a big impact. So we just wanna do less of that. So my motto is just three words, render less, less often. And my React performance journey started with optimizing state, because state is what triggers renders. So everybody says lift the state up, but then you pass it all the way down a tree, which is a big performance problem, because it renders the whole tree all the way down. So every time something changes at the top, re-renders everything. Uh, context can be better, but it can also be worse, since every consumer of a context also re-renders when it changes, even if it doesn't really need to. So I built Legend State to make the renders as rare and small as possible. It's basically a signaling system where each component subscribes specifically to only what it cares about, and it re-renders itself when that changes. So instead of passing state all the way down a tree and rendering everything in between, we focus small re-renders only where they're needed. So when I was hearing all these complaints about the list, I wondered if I could build a faster list using this kind of a signaling system. So I built a prototype using Legend State, and it was actually quite a bit faster. But this will not work by just guessing what the problem was. I needed to go deeper and understand why it's faster to make sure I solve the right problems. So I dug into the code of Flatlist and Flashlist to understand the basics of how they work. I looked at their component trees while scrolling, inserted a bunch of console logs to see what was happening. And like almost all performance problems in React, they were just rendering more than they needed to. So if we look at Flatlist's component tree while we scroll, you can kind of see what's happening. The array of items is changing all the time. You can see those keys changing on the left. So as I was playing with the debugger and reading some of the code, I started to understand what it does. So it, as you scroll, it computes what's in view based on the scroll position. Then it puts a padding at the top and the bottom, and it renders the array of items. Uh, so as you're scrolling, it's constantly re-rendering a new array with the items that are now in view. And an interesting thing it does is it also keeps a couple screens worth of items at the top so that when you press the top of the screen to scroll to top, it looks fast. And so it's doing a lot of re-rendering and a lot of layout, and it's a lot of native views being torn down and recreated. And it's just rendering a lot more items than are actually on screen. So then I looked at Flashlist's component tree, and we can see that it does it very differently. It allocates a pool of absolutely positioned containers that it renders items into. So it computes what's in view, and it assigns the items into the containers. So if you look at the props there, you can see the height and index and Y positions are changing as you scroll, because these containers are just re-rendering. So a big benefit here is that when a new item comes into view, it reuses the container, and it can reuse all of the native views as well. So it doesn't tear down and rebuild the, re the native views. It just recycles all that. But there's still a big bottleneck here in that React is rendering the whole array, diffing the outer list component and all the containers, passing all the props down, all that. So then if we look at legend list component tree, it looks similar. It's still using those absolutely positioned containers. But you can see the props never change. The hooks are changing. Uh, so it works very differently. It never re-renders that outer list of containers ever again after the first one. It instead signals individual containers to re-render as needed. So what that looks like is basically this. While you're scrolling down, it's signaling individual containers to re-render at a new position with a new item. It results in the same thing on screen, but it skips a bunch of work in the middle. Uh, so instead of re-rendering an entire tree of components, it's just one container at a time. So this saves a bunch of the processing time by rendering fewer components. Uh, but then we find this weird thing. Because everything is absolutely positioned, we don't have intrinsic height anymore. So we need to calculate the size of all the items and set a style with the height so that the scroll view knows how large the content is. 
but that can be updated many times a second, and it would need to re-render the whole element tree and all the containers just to set a single style. Some of it gets memoized, but it's still more work than we want to do many times a second. So the first way I solved this was I made a wrapper component that uses a total size signal. So it, it re-renders itself when the height changes. So these signals use usync external store to subscribe to external state and just render when that changes. So that signaling lets us skip all the stuff in the middle, all the legend list, all of the scroll view, and everything else. So now the re-renders are focused to the single containers component, so it's much faster. But we still have to render that entire array that's inside with this style. So then I found an even cooler way to do this. So we can just set the height style as an animated value. We're not actually animating anything. We're just calling a set value on an animated. But that's let a, that lets us set the style without even re-rendering. Uh, so it saves just a huge amount of time. I tried doing this for all the container positions as well, but that actually made everything slower and jankier because setting an animated style happens at a different time than the React render, so it got all out of sync and it looked crazy. So it seems like it's a good solution only in specific cases, but it worked pretty well for a few cases in Legend List. Uh, so those are the main techniques I used to render as little as possible. So the outer list never re-renders. The containers only render when their item or position change. So then let's move on to less often. So the main problem with lists in the old architecture is that layouts were asynchronous. So you can see in this video, which I slowed down to 5%, basically what we have to do is we estimate the size of an item. So I'm naive, and I think they're all 300 pixels. And so we render them on screen as if they're 300 pixels apart. But they're actually only 70 pixels apart. So then we get these big old gaps. And then sometime later, we would get an on layout and realize that the items are smaller. So then we shift the positions. But now we have more empty space, so we need to render more items into there. And so then we get the on layouts. And then we still have more empty space, so we render more items in there. And so besides, besides looking terrible, we have these gaps and these staggered renders. It has to render every container twice, first with a new item, and then to reposition it. So on the old architecture, Legendless just does this as fast as it possibly can, ideally while it's still off screen so you don't see it. Uh, this is the bit that FlashList solved with native code. So it has a native component which receives the positions from JavaScript, then it measures the elements on the native side and fixes any gaps before it actually renders them on screen. But in the new architecture, view measurement is synchronous, and it's available in use layout effect, which runs before elements display on screen. So when we get the first layout effect, we can measure all of the elements at once, trigger one computation and re-render, and close those gaps before they display. So we can do what used to require a native component with just JavaScript, thanks to the new architecture. So that fixes that gap problem. And also, because we can fix the gaps uh, before they actually render, the initial render and position updates happen just in one frame instead of two. Uh, so the next bottleneck I encountered was the computation of what elements are in view and their positions looks something like this. Uh, on a huge list, it could do a lot of work looping through thousands of items. It could trigger multiple renders. It's called both by a new item scrolling into view and by items updating their positions. So while scrolling quickly, it could run multiple times per frame. Even if it takes just a couple milliseconds, that adds up. We only have 16 milliseconds total per frame to render at 60 frames per second. So we got to be real careful here. So I tried a lot of things along the way to both speed it up and do it less often. Uh, there's a lot of little micro-optimizations in there, but the main one was to just loop fewer things. So when computing items in view, we start at the previous range, so we don't have to loop the whole array. So we loop up from the previous start index until it goes off screen, and then we loop down until it goes off screen. So in most cases, it's only looping just a bit more than what's actually on screen. So this and a lot of other optimizations speeded up that compute. But it's still not great. It's still a bit slow. So we want to run it less often. So the main aim there is we don't need to run this on every single 
like sub-pixel scroll. And we don't need to do it on every item resize, because items might even be off screen by the time you get that. So that'd be a big waste of time. So one of my ideas was to just batch the updates from scroll, then improve the frame rate quite a bit, but then it added delays because of the batching. So I was grumbling to myself about how stupid this was, but I came up with an interesting idea. So we know based on the item positions and sizes, the next scroll offset that would trigger an update, it's when the scroll position reaches the outer edges of what's currently rendered. So we can pre-compute what those offsets will be. Like in this example, it's 81 pixels above the screen, 97 pixels below the screen. So we can just skip all the scroll events until we get there. So that had a very big impact on computing less often. We now only compute when an item would actually change. Uh, and there's also a ton of other optimizations that add up. Uh, since a big part of the performance comes from never re-rendering the inner list, we memo the inner list component and ensure that its props never change. So normally, you would put a bunch of dependencies and you use callbacks and you use memos. We don't do that. We put all the state and the latest props into a ref so the state callbacks can still access the current state even though they're stale because it gets them through the ref. Uh, so that way, we don't need to keep recreating the callbacks and breaking the memo with a changed property. I don't necessarily recommend you do this for all of your React components. Uh, it adds a lot of complexity. We have to be really careful about how we access state. If you accidentally access stale state, it'll cause a huge problem. But we're optimizing a really hot path here. So sometimes you have to do some weird, weird stuff. Uh, so with all that, we're rendering only the minimum number of containers that actually change. We're never re-rendering the whole tree. We're re-rendering only when the user would actually see it. We're doing expensive computations only when absolutely necessary. So of course, your optimizations may vary. These are the bottlenecks that I encountered specific to a performant virtual list because it needs to reposition and re-render tons of items at 60 frames a second. Uh, your app's bottlenecks will be different and, of course, require different solutions. But I would bet that most of the bottlenecks are from rendering too much too often. So I strongly suggest using a state library. Use state and use context. Just don't cut it. Uh, I would recommend Legend State as the fastest one. I'm obviously biased, so pick your favorite. Uh, of course, use the React compiler. Uh, don't use Flatlist. Uh, it's totally cool to just throw logs in your components sometimes to make sure they don't render more. I do it all the time. Um, you can also use highlight updating in the dev tools to check your re-renders. Or on web, they have React Scan, which is pretty cool. Uh, so basically, when you're using that, you want to see flashing boxes on screen only when things should actually be changing. If you're seeing too many boxes flashing, then you know you have a problem that you can fix. But when you find that performance problem, first identify the bottlenecks so you don't waste a huge amount of time and make sure you solve the actual problem that you have. Uh, so I hope you'll give Legend, Legend List a try. It should make your, li your app's list faster. And if you have any general performance problems, Legend State may help also. And hopefully, these strategies uh, can help you optimize everything else in your apps. And if Legend List helps you, please consider sponsoring it so I can dev devote more time to do this. And if you see me around in the next couple of days, let's chat about performance. Uh, so thank you.